Today's player is overlooked as one of the best scorers of the late 90s and early 2000s. He was the lone bright spot on some awful Dallas Mavericks teams, and when they finally started gaining traction and getting recognition, he graciously took a backseat to their rising stars. That player, of course, is Michael Finley, a player who averaged 20 points over nearly a decade in Dallas, and even with the emergence of Dirk Nowitzki, was often still the player that got the ball when they needed a bucket because of his shot creating and shot making ability. Finley was as reliable as they come, and wouldn't miss a game until his seventh season in the league. The one knock on Finley was his efficiency, which really suffered during the second half of his career. But nonetheless, he was a guy that would do whatever was asked of him and do it with a smile. He scored when he had to, but knew when to defer. And maybe this is why he isn't talked about as much as he should be. But we're going to talk about him today, so let's see if we can jog your memory. Michael Finley would attend Proviso East High School, where as a senior in 1991, he would help lead the team to the IHSA Class 2A Basketball Championship, as well as be named to the All-Tournament team. Finley would be part of the three amigos, consisting of him and other future NBA players Sherell Ford and Donnie Boyce. Proviso played Peoria Manuel, who were led by Howard Nathan, who most were touting as the best high school player in Illinois. A forgotten fact is that Nathan and Peoria beat Marshall in the semifinal, who were led by one of the stars of Hoop Dreams, Arthur Agee. After Finley's high school success, he would get the opportunity to meet up with Michael Jordan and play him in horse and one-on-one -on -one games which were broadcast on the local news, where he was a loser both times. But Jordan thought he might see him in the league down the line. I'll give you a rematch. Right. Or, I don't know. I may see you in about five years. <laughs> Finley would go on to play his freshman season of college for coach Steve Yoder, who had recruited him to play at Wisconsin. Finley would choose Wisconsin as he wanted to play in the Big Ten, and he wanted to compete against the best. Finley started as a freshman, but Wisconsin was a weak team, with Finley being the only player who would go on to the NBA, and they would finish the 1992 season 13-18 and 18, and miss the tournament. Finley finished the season with averages of around 12.5 points, 5 rebounds, and 2.5 and assists per game. Finley's sophomore season started with a different coach. Yoder was out, and the 36-year-old Stu Jackson was hired to replace him. For a lot of players, this could have been a disaster, but Finley was already showing that it was never about him and team success came first. As referring to the hiring of Jackson in a 2022 interview, Finley would say, it was perfect. Coach Jackson was perfect for me as a basketball player, he was perfect for me as a man. And it showed in Finley's play, as his scoring average increased nearly 10 points to 22.1 points per game, along with almost six rebounds and three assists, including a selection to the all Big Ten first team. Wisconsin wouldn't see much improvement though, as they finished 14 and 14 and missed the tournament again. 1994 was a historic year for Badgers basketball. Wisconsin would begin the year 12-1, including an upset of Glenn Robinson and number 9 Purdue. Finley would average over 20 points for the second straight season, and freshman center Richard Griffith provided the Badgers with an imposing force in the middle. Wisconsin would achieve their first winning record of Finley's career as they finished the regular season 17-10, and, and for the first time in 47 years, the Badgers were heading to the big dance. Finley would play great in the tourney, scoring 22 against Cincinnati in a first round win, and then putting up 36 in a loss to Missouri in the second round. For the season, Finley would average about 20.5 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 3 assists, including a selection to the All Big Ten second team. Stu Jackson left for the NBA before the 1995 season and was replaced with Stan Van Gundy. Even though Finley had another 20 points per game season and Griffith averaged a double double, the Badgers took a step back, and Finley's senior season ended with a 13-14 record. But Finley would get another selection for the All-Big Ten first team. On the season, Finley would average about 20.5 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. But Finley's time at Wisconsin was up, and he would enter the NBA draft. Finley was drafted 21st overall by Phoenix. The Suns were three years removed from a finals appearance, but were an aging team led by their duo of Charles Barkley and Kevin Johnson. But Barkley was 32, and Johnson was 29, but had missed almost 26 games that season. Finley would begin the season coming off the bench, but would soon be put into the starting lineup and started 72 of the 82 games he played. Finley would also compete in the dunk contest, where he was runner-up to fellow rookie Brent Berry of the LA Clippers. The Suns would go 41-41, and but they'd still make the playoffs. Unfortunately, Finley would get injured on the final day of the regular season and be out for the playoffs where the Suns lost to the Spurs in four games. Finley would only talk positively about his rookie experience with the Suns, as he would mention on the Knuckleheads podcast that Barkley and other veterans would not haze him or make him pay for things, 
and would instead tell him that he's cool in their books as long as he keeps working hard. For the season, Finley would average about 15 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game, as well as be named to the all-rookie first team. Finley began his second year with the Suns, who looked a lot different, as Barkley had been traded to the Rockets in the offseason. Finley was putting up similar numbers from the year before, but then he was traded to the Dallas Mavericks as part of a package for NBA star and Finley's close friend Jason Kidd on December 26, 1996. Only a year prior, the Mavericks looked to be set with their three Jays trio of Jason Kidd, Jim Jackson, and Jamal Mashburn. But a lot of tension between the players, specifically Kidd and Jackson, led to all three of them being sent to different teams throughout the 97 season. Once the three Jays were all gone, Finley was the new leader of a pretty awful Mavs team. Finley would participate in the slam dunk contest again this season, where rookie Kobe Bryant would take home the trophy. And Finley would be remembered for performing one of the worst but funniest dunk attempts of all time. Overall, the Mavericks would finish 24 and 58, and Finley would finish the season with overall averages of 15 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 2.5 assists per game. There wasn't a lot of hope for Dallas going into the 98 season, as the team was basically full of journeymen and young guys. Prior to the season, Finley, along with Ray Allen, Derek Anderson, Vin Baker, and Eddie Jones, would be announced as the inaugural Team Jordan of athletes endorsing the newly developed Jordan brand. The Mavericks would live up to their low expectations, as they finished 20-62, and 62, which was somehow only the sixth worst record in the NBA, in a season that saw the Nuggets go 11-71. and 71. The Mavs would also hire Don Nelson as head coach and general manager this season, and he would implement a run-and-gun offense that would serve the team quite well in the coming years, once they had more pieces in place. Finley would see his averages jump significantly, as he finished the year with about 21.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. He would also finish first in minutes per game at 41.4 while playing in all 82 games. Additionally, Finley would show his supreme confidence in a February 13th game against the Pacers, where he hit a game-winning three at the buzzer in a game where he shot 12 for 35 prior to the game winner. 1999 was the beginning of a new chapter of Dallas basketball, as the team drafted Dirk Nowitzki out of Germany with the ninth pick, while also trading for Phoenix point guard and former Finley teammate Steve Nash after the draft. These two started slowly, as Nash had to learn how to be a starting point guard, and Dirk, as a rookie, just wasn't quite NBA ready yet as the Mavs finished 19-31 and 31 in the lockout shortened season and missed the playoffs. But Finley still played his usual consistent scoring role as the team's number one option and leader. He would play all 50 games of the season and again put up about 20 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 4.5 assists per game. The Mavericks were getting close, and the 2000 season saw them finish just two games below 500 at 40 and 42. And honestly, they probably would have finished with a winning record if Nash didn't miss 25 games with an ankle injury. Dirk became a starter and improved significantly as he averaged 17.5 points per game. Don Nelson's run-and-gun offense was in full effect as the Mavs scored the third most points per game in the NBA, but also allowed the most points. Finley averaged a career high in points and in turn was voted to his first All-Star game of his career, while playing all 82 games and leading the league in minutes again. For the season, Finley averaged just over 22.5 points, almost 6.5 rebounds, and 5.5 and assists per game. Dallas was coming and Finley was one of the key pieces. The 2001 season saw Finley voted to the All-Star game, average over 20 points, play all 82 games, and lead the league in minutes yet again, as well as sign a seven-year contract extension. This season also saw Finley's first playoff appearance since his rookie year, as the Mavs finished 53-29 and behind their trio of Finley, Nowitzki, and Nash. And Juwan Howard also contributed 18 points a night after coming over from Washington at the trade deadline. The Mavs played the Jazz in the first round of the playoffs and beat them in five to advance to the second round. This was the Mavs' first playoff series win since their Western Conference Finals run in 1988. The Mavs would end up losing to the Spurs in the second round, but this was still a successful season in Dallas. Finley would average 19.7 points per game throughout the playoffs, but struggled with his efficiency as he only shot 36% over the 10 playoff games, and Dirk led the team in playoff scoring and regular season scoring the first season Finley would not be leading scorer since he arrived in Dallas. For the season, Finley would average 21.5 points, about 5 rebounds, and 4.5 assists per game. The Mavs came out with a new logo and uniforms to start the 2002 season, signifying a new era in Dallas. Dirk would overtake Finley this year as the team's franchise player and number one option, but Finley was always a team player who would play whatever role was asked of him, so he wasn't bitter 
and still averaged over 20 for the fifth straight season. The Mavs would finish fourth in a competitive Western Conference with a 57 and 25 record. Don Nelson's game plan was in full effect, as Dallas was first in points scored and second last in points allowed. Dallas would sweep Minnesota in round one before losing to Sacramento in five games in the second round. Finley would score his playoff career high in game three versus Sacramento as he went for 37 on nearly 57% shooting in a loss. Finley had a much improved playoffs as he averaged nearly 25 points on about 47% shooting. And for the season, he averaged about 20 and a half points, five rebounds and three and a half assists per game and missed 13 games, the first missed games of his career. Finley would also play for the 2002 US national team in the FIBA World Championships over the summer. This would be the first time the U.S. failed to win a championship in international play since NBA players were allowed. The 2003 season saw the Mavs start 14-0 and go 60-22 for the year, which was good for second in the NBA, and once again the Mavs scored the most points per game. Finley would average under 20 points for the first time since the 97 season, but he would score a career-high 42 versus Detroit on November 27. Nowitzki was solidified as the team's go-to scorer, but Finley was arguably more important to the team's offense as he would be the second option when teams would key in on Dirk. Finley didn't have the most efficient season, as he shot under 43%, but Finley knew he could still fill it up, just didn't have an interest in shooting the most shots or trying to score the most points, as they had a complete offensive team, and Finley would make sure he was ready when his number was called. The Mavs had two hard playoff series, as the Blazers and the Kings both took them to seven, two series in which Finley struggled as he averaged only 13.7 points versus the Blazers and 19.3 versus the Kings. But Finley would step up in the conference finals versus the Spurs, as he would average 22.5 on 50% shooting, and even drop 31 in a Game 5 win when Dirk was sidelined with a sprained knee. The Mavs would ultimately succumb in six games, but it seemed that they were a piece or two away from a championship winning team, as Finley averaged about 19.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 3 assists per game on the year. Coming into the 04 season, the Mavs traded for Antoine Walker and Anton Jameson. Now these guys were both 20 point per game scorers a year prior. Added to a team with two 20 point scorers and a pass first point guard, how could anyone stop this? Well, there wasn't enough balls to go around to have everyone score what they usually would, and Walker saw his average drop 6 points, while Jameson played the 6 man role and saw his average drop by 8. But he would win 6 man of the year. Not surprisingly, no one did stop it, and the team was first in scoring, but they didn't stop anybody, as they allowed the second most points. The Mavs won 8 less games than the season before, and would see an early playoff exit, as the Kings knocked them out in the first round. This would be a particularly bad series for Finley, as he averaged 13 points on 38% shooting. This was a disappointing experiment for the Mavs, and both Jameson and Walker were gone before the 05 season started. For the 04 season, Finley would still get his, and average about 18.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. So the 05 season started and Walker and Jamison were gone, but there was another someone that was missing, and this was a big someone. Steve Nash would sign with the Suns over the summer, when Mark Cuban refused to match their offer. The Mavs were still trying to just outscore everybody, as they received Jerry Stackhouse from the Wizards in exchange for Jamison, and future Mavs legend Jason Terry came over from Atlanta for Walker. The 2005 season would see Don Nelson step down as head coach and name former Mavs point guard Avery Johnson as his successor. Stackhouse would miss 25 games, but still produce, while Terry also played an important role on the team. Johnson inherited a 42-22 team and continued that trend as he coached them to a 16-2 record over the final 18 games of the season. Finley only played 64 games, and although he was a starter, he had averages similar to his rookie averages. The Mavs would beat the Rockets in seven in the first round in a series where Sean Bradley was the recipient of one of the nastiest posters of all time. Here comes McCready. Oh, he just shook the gravity right out of the building. The Mavs would face their former point guard and reigning MVP Steve Nash in the second round, where they would lose in six. Finley would play a modest role in the playoffs, averaging 13.1 points, and for the season he would average about 15.5 points, four rebounds, and two and a half assists per game but he would also shoot under 43%. Prior to the 2006 season, Dallas sadly exercised their amnesty clause to waive Finley. Originally, the Mavs were exploring trade options to get rid of Finley's contract and ideally get him to the East, but they were unsuccessful, so they used the amnesty clause. This was tough for Finley, as he loved Dallas and Dallas loved him. Finley would have this to say regarding the release in an episode of the Knuckleheads podcast. We were, we were about to make some noise 
and I was unable to to appreciate it. So it kind of hurt, you know, because I wanted to be a part of that when they, I mean, they eventually won in 2011, props to them, but I wanted to be a part of that that build and, and, and that celebration because I was there when it's from the start and I wanted to be there when, when they when they got to host up the trophy, so. Finley's services were wanted by contenders such as Miami and Phoenix, but ultimately Finley chose to take a much smaller deal in order to play for the defending champion, San Antonio Spurs. In explaining why he chose the Spurs, Finley would say, in a nutshell, they're already a championship team, but they have room for improvement. And I feel my game can help them in the areas where they need improvement. The 06 season saw Finley in a reserve role for the first time in his career, but he would also play his highest game total since the 2001 season. Finley was going from a team that was all about offense with no focus on defense in Dallas to the complete opposite in San Antonio. Finley fit in well and would play alongside the Spurs big three of Duncan, Parker, and Ginobili. And the Spurs would finish first in the West with a 63-19 record. And after being the Kings in the first round, Finley would meet his former team, the Mavericks, in the second round, where they would lose in six. Finley did play an efficient series as he averaged 10.6 points on nearly 52% shooting and started four games. This series would also see tempers flare between Finley and former teammate Jason Terry in Game 5 when Terry would punch Finley in a scramble for a loose ball, a foul which Terry would ultimately be suspended for Game 6 for. On the season, Finley would average 10 points, 3 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game, but his efficiency was poor as he barely shot over 41%. The 2007 season would be a memorable one for Finley. He played in all 82 games and continued in a backup role. Finley had a pretty modest season, but in the playoffs, he would step his game up. Finley would start throughout all 20 games of the playoffs, and in the 16 games of the first three rounds, Finley would only have four games in which he didn't reach double figures, including a first round game five versus the Nuggets when he would set a Spurs franchise record with eight threes on nine attempts. His efficiency struggles continued as he shot 41% from the field during the playoffs and averaged 11.3 points. But it didn't matter, as the Spurs swept the Cavs in the finals and Michael Finley had finally won an NBA championship in his 12th NBA season. Although it hurt to be released by the Mavs, he made the right decision with the Spurs and won a chip before Dallas did. For the season, Finley averaged 9 points, 2.5 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game, but again shot poorly at about 41%. After the Spurs' success the previous year, Greg Popovich decided to keep Manu Ginobili coming off the bench for the most part in the 2008 season, which meant Finley became a starter again. There were some games where Finley didn't start and most games where he did, but he never complained and just played the role that was asked of him. All he cared about was the team's success. The Spurs finished 56 and 26, but this year would lose to Kobe and the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Finley played a very limited role these playoffs and would see his first playoffs without double digit scoring averages. Finley would only score 6.7 points on 40% shooting during the playoffs, and for the regular season, he would finish with 10 points, 3 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game. But his efficiency continued to be concerning, as he shot 41% from the field. The 09 season would be the final full season in a Spurs uniform for Finley. At this point, he was 35 years old, but was still serving as a starter, and played in all 82 games, starting 77 of them. The Spurs would make the playoffs with a 54-28 record, but would lose to Finley's old squad, the Mavericks, for the second time in four years. Finley would play a bit more efficiently in the playoffs compared to the previous year, as he would average 8 points on 44% shooting, as the Spurs' third leading scorer since Ginobili was out injured for the year. Finley would finish the season averaging nearly 10 points per game, 3.5 rebounds, and 1.5 assists on improved shooting as he went almost 44% from the field. Finley's role in the offense saw a major drop in the 2010 season, as the team had picked up Richard Jefferson and Antonio McDice, and had second-year guard George Hill earning a lot more minutes. Finley only played 25 games for the Spurs through the first 57 games of the season, even though he was healthy. So, per Finley's request, the Spurs bought out his contract on March 1st, and Finley signed with Boston three days later. Finley would have a bit bigger of a role with the Celtics for the remainder of the season, and would play in 18 playoff games but contributed less than a point per game and only saw the court in two out of seven games in a finals loss versus the Lakers for the year. Finley would average around four and a half points, one and a half rebounds, and one assist per game over the course of the regular season. After the season, Finley decided to hang him up, calling it quits on an underrated 15-year career, which saw Finley accomplish things he never thought possible and doing it the right way by staying out of the media, never being involved in team conflict, and always putting team success before himself. 
It paid off for him, as he was a valued member of every team he played on, and saw a lot of success because of the way he played and the attitude he brought. Finley did flirt with the comeback in 2012, but that never materialized. So overall, Finley was the guy in Dallas for half of his time there, but seamlessly transitioned into a secondary option behind Dirk, and then played a crucial bench role for some great Spurs teams. Finley was versatile and reliable, and no matter what you needed, Michael Finley could do it for you. Thanks for watching today's episode of Forgotten Player Profiles. Hope you enjoyed, and subscribe if you want to see more. We'll see you next time.